want to admit it or not, COVID has changed us all. It may not be in big ways, but COVID has changed our lifestyles and how we function on a daily basis. I used to think that COVID didn't affect me much. At the time, I was just upset. My family and I were going to Hawaii the week the COVID outbreak hit the United States. Because my parents were physicians, they didn't want to risk the chance of leaving Oklahoma to go to Hawaii for the week. I couldn't see any of my friends for the whole break, and I was stuck at home, just like every other teen in the United States. To us teens, it was a big deal not being able to see our friends over spring break or not being able to go on vacations that we wanted to. I enjoyed it because it was time away from school and I had more time for myself and for my family. But we then got an email from school saying that spring break was extended for another two weeks. All the students were ecstatic that we didn't have to go back to school, but instead we'd be doing online school, which we never thought was possible. Now online school was actually fun. Less class time, less homework. What student wouldn't enjoy that? But it became four more weeks and another four more weeks until it accumulated to the rest of the school year. After a couple of weeks of not being able to see my friends and not being able to go out, I started to get tired of doing the same thing and being in the same place every single day. Even though I didn't think COVID took a toll on me, it definitely took a toll on my family. My dad, who is a pulmonologist and critical care specialist, was a frontline worker. He sees and he sees COVID patients and he sees patients die every single day. I wouldn't even get to see him at times because he would go to work and after he came back, he had to quarantine in a separate room away from all of us. Because of this, he had to move and take a job in Dallas where he worked for three weeks and came back for a week to visit us. My mom, who is an oncologist, doesn't see COVID patients, but has to be extremely careful because the patients she sees are especially vulnerable to the disease. Because of my parents' profession, I wasn't allowed to leave my house until the end of May. And even then, I could only see two of my friends the entire summer. That way, I was being careful and I was being very deliberate about where I was going and how I was spending my time outside of my house. Then, I got an opportunity over the summer to work in a lab where I worked on projects concerning SARS-CoV-1, SARS-CoV-2, and feline coronaviruses. This opportunity to work with the virus up close and personal allowed me to see it in a different light. I was able to understand how the virus replicates and how it functions by manipulating viral RNA and DNA. This is when I really started to get interested in COVID-19 and how it affects people all over the world. Since the beginning of the pandemic, we've all been suffering from information fatigue. Too much information is being thrown at us too fast every single day including facts that turned out to be false. It was difficult for me to sift through my new findings that would bombard the news apps on my phone, and I would often have to sift through and read what were the trusted sources that I could believe in. Because of this, I worked hard to inform myself and got inspired to create informational videos on the subject from trusted sources. I began making videos on Facebook and published videos on YouTube, talking about what COVID-19 is, debunking myths about the virus, providing ways for people to stay safe and healthy, and giving updates on what medical researchers were doing in hopes of putting an end to the pandemic. Soon after, I decided to host a webinar for families that featured many medical professionals from across the country that would talk about COVID from the standpoint of their speciality and would answer questions that families had as children went back to school and parents went back to work. Doing all of this work with COVID, both in the lab and by making videos to inform myself and others, made me feel like I was making a difference in other people's lives, even if it was just providing more information. As the school year approached, I was elected as student body president, which means that I had to plan and organize all the start of school events. Everything that we thought we knew about school for the past two and three quarters of the years of high school had completely changed. Our school went from a college-like schedule with 45-minute classes to a block schedule with four classes a day, an hour and a half each. 
plexiglass was put in at every single desk to ensure that no contact was being made between people who sat next to each other in class. Masks had to be worn at all times, and we could only see the foreheads and the eyes of our peers and teachers. And most importantly, we had to stay six feet apart. So many rules and regulations were being placed that we felt that our presence at school was being mocked because we were in the same place that we had always been, but it was never going to be or feel like a normal year. Everything we wanted to do for our senior year had to be restricted for safety reasons. Usually on the first day of school, all the seniors huddled together in the front of the school to greet the freshmen. People would be hollering and throwing signs and making sure that the freshmen felt welcome and ensuring that everyone was excited for the year. This year, we had to reinvent this idea. Instead of hovering on top of each other, we had to stand six feet apart on designated cones from the front gate to the front of the school. But because we were so far apart from each other, we couldn't recreate the same energy the seniors in years past had recreated for us. But we had to make do with the circumstances that we were in. At least we were fortunate enough to go back to school in person where many students across the country and across the world weren't able to do so. I was so excited to see my parents and my friends and my teachers, and I was so excited to be able to go to the places in Tulsa that reopened, and I was able to see how the world was becoming a little bit more lively again. However, how much ever I tried to keep myself safe and keep myself educated about COVID-19, it affected me more than ever. On a Thursday night in the middle of November, my mom got a phone call from the school nurse who said that I had been exposed to somebody who tested positive for COVID in one of my classes earlier that week. I couldn't believe it. I thought, surely I didn't have COVID. I had to quarantine for the next couple of days to ensure that I waited five days after my exposure to get tested. A lot was riding on my positive test. I was going to lead a senior retreat over the weekend for student council, and I was going to be in my school's choir concert as a soloist for the first time. I went to take a rapid COVID test so that I could get the results back within 15 minutes. However, it was taking a little bit longer than 15 minutes for the results to come back. My dad said that if the results did take longer than normal, then it would be bad news. Lo and behold, my test results came back positive. I couldn't believe it. My parents and I were totally shocked. We were in such disbelief that we ordered another test to ensure that it wasn't a false positive. And again, the test came back positive. The only symptom that I had been experiencing all week was a slight runny nose, and I never thought that I would get COVID from the place that I felt the most safe. My grandmother was actually living with my family at the time, and because her room was right next to mine, I couldn't quarantine in my own room and had to quarantine in the basement alone for 10 days. Now, days go by really slowly in isolation. I was completely losing my mind. I had no sense of time in the day. I would sit on the couch, do school, do homework. My parents would occasionally bring me down food and I would go grab it from the kitchen area when I could. They would call me to check up on me and all I could do was say was how bored I was. I would call my friends and try to see what they were up to because I hated being away from them and being away from school. I never felt so lonely. And I never valued the presence of my friends and my family more than when I was in quarantine. When I got out of quarantine, my life was immediately a hundred times better. The warm sun, the cool breeze, the feeling of freedom made me value so much of what I took for granted. Now you may be wondering, why is my story of any use to you? Well, I'm telling you my story because I want to share the lessons that I've learned throughout this pandemic and how they will help me in the future. This is an event that happened to us all. We all lived through it. I had to become flexible and adapt my life around the conditions of the world. I had to be creative and think outside the box to keep the social environment that many of us thrive in. Humans are social creatures. When taken away the interactions that mean the most to us, and shape us into who we are, we feel alone and 
secluded. I never realized how much being around people really affected me until my quarantine. Now, quarantine gave us the time to reflect on our lives and encourage us to savor every moment because we don't know what's going to happen. We were faced with a huge challenge this past year that forced us to be creative with our lives, our work, and how we interacted with others. Yet, we all found ways to persevere through and found what really interests us and what keeps us going, keeps us to learn, and keeps us from building our goals around our life. We all made the most of our time in isolation, and we all learned how to adapt our lives to this new way of living, which has perhaps altered our lives forever and has pushed us to become stronger out of it. Now, we didn't know that this would happen in our lifetime, and we don't know what's going to happen in the future. But what we do know is that whatever it is that it's become, we will put ourselves to the test, and we will make the most of what is given to us. Thank you.